Gonzalo Ramirez raped Norma Patricia Esparza in 1995 after meeting him at a club. Several weeks later, Ramirez turned up dead, but it would take decades before his killers were identified. Although Norma Patricia Esparza was a talented college professor, mother and wife, did a secret from her past reveal a much darker side to her? While attending college in California, Esparza met a man at a club who was found dead on the side of the road with his savage set of injuries. Larry Montgomery, a detective with the Irvine Police Department who was at the time involved in the case he was definitely hacked to death. Police identified the man as Gonzalo Ramirez, 24, a young father of two young daughters. Investigators were baffled by the brutal crime until they discovered Esparza's phone number scrawled on Ramirez's phone bill and contacted the Pomona College sophomore. Esparza, however, had her own harrowing story to tell, and it would take investigators more than two decades to uncover the truth. Esparza told Dateline's Andrea Canning that she met Ramirez in a club in March 1995 and gave him her number, thinking that he was nice. The next morning, she said Ramirez called and invited her to have breakfast with her sister and friend. After lunch, Esparza offered him a ride back to campus, where he then invited her up to her dorm room for a glass of water. But that is when the day took a terrifying turn, according to Esparza. As soon as we enter the room, he tells me that he wants to have sex. She replied, I do not wish to talk to him. He becomes aggressive and attempts to kiss me, but I push him away. We are struggling, and eventually he removes my pants and forces himself upon me. Sparza reported that she was left sobbing, half-naked and curled up in a ball. In her words, I felt so dirty and so ashamed, and I was just blaming myself. Despite never calling the police, Esparza said that she went to the college health center the next day. The patient reported the incident to a nurse, but no further action was taken by the nurse. The medical report from the college confirmed that Asparza visited the health center and was examined by both a nurse and doctor, but no mention was made of a rape, and only said that Asparza had unprotected sex and requested a morning after pill. Having been raped, the college sophomore found it difficult to put the incident behind her and found herself weeping and crying while trying to complete her coursework. Initially, she kept the alleged attack a secret until her ex-boyfriend, Gianni Van, dropped by her dorm room and she confided in him. She said, I didn't feel like I wanted to. But I guess I wanted someone to be there and understand. Ramirez would die a few weeks later. After spending the evening at the same club with a friend, he and his friend got in their car to drive home. According to the friend, a white van pulled up behind them and struck the vehicle while they were driving. Ramirez's friend asked him to continue driving. But Ramirez felt they should exchange information and got out of the vehicle. Upon exiting the vehicle, he was attacked by several men. In an attempt to obtain assistance, the friend ran down the street, but when he returned with police, Ramirez had disappeared. Later, the body was found along the 405 freeway badly mangled and wrapped in a blue towel-like material. When we pick up my brother, we couldn't recognize his face, Ramirez's brother, Benito, told Dateline, secrets uncovered describing his brother as a responsible and very good person. After discovering Esparza's phone number scrawled on that phone bill, investigators reached out to the college student 
who admitted to telling Van about the alleged rape. Investigators immediately contacted Van, but he denied knowing anything about the crime. However, authorities discovered that he owned a white van that was similar to the one that was used that evening. After initially denying that he owned one, Van admitted that he owned a white van registered under his name, which was, however, being used by a mechanic at accurate transmission. After obtaining a search warrant for the property, investigators discovered the van along with the same old-style blue towel dispensers that were found with towels similar to those found on the body. Additionally, investigators found a drop of blood in an office in the shop, but the DNA test at the time was not as sophisticated as it is today. While it was unable to exclude Ramirez, it was also unable to confirm that the blood belonged to him. Regardless, investigators believed they had sufficient evidence to arrest Van for the murder in 1996. However, they were surprised to learn that Asparza had secretly married him one month after the murder, ensuring that she would not be forced to testify against him in court. Esparza told Dateline later that the marriage was forced upon her. She stated that she feared for her life. When I learned about Gonzalo Ramirez's murder, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, what will they do to me if I do not follow their instructions? In the absence of Esparza's testimony, prosecutors were unable to build a strong case against Van. After the incident, Esparza moved on with her life. After completing her college education, she became a political activist and fell in love with Jorge Mancillas, a distinguished scholar whom she met while working on a political campaign in California. He has been my pillar of strength ever since we met, Esparza said of her love. The goal of Esparza's Ph.D. in psychology was to help children who, like her, had come from homes in which they had been sexually abused. Mansillas proposed to Esparza in 2001 and she graciously accepted, but the wedding could not take place because she was married at the time. That night she broke down and wept and told me she could not marry me because she was already married and that it was not a real marriage, but she could not tell me the circumstances because she felt they would put her in danger, he told Canning. Massilis believed Esparza to be the one for her, regardless of the hidden secrets in her past and enlisted the help of a lawyer who was able to obtain a divorce from Van after three years of negotiations. They were married, moved to France, and Esparza began working as a psychology professor at a university. Eventually, she gave birth to a daughter as well. But after investigators re-examined the case, her past would come back to haunt her. Dean Fulcher a detective at the time with the Santa Ana police, asked crime lab investigators to retest the blood sample recovered from the auto repair shop and discovered the numbers were astronomical that it had to be, Ramirez's. In addition to keeping a constant eye on Van and Esparza, Fulker discovered that the former couple was no longer married, Removing the protection Esparza had previously enjoyed that prevented her from testifying. Investigators sent Esparza an email asking for her assistance in the murder case, but she refused to agree to an interview and because she lived in Europe, she was outside the jurisdiction of the California-based investigators. In order to find other witnesses, Police re-interviewed Nancy Luna, the friend of Esparza who was with her the night she met Ramirez. Luna reported to police that Esparza brought Van to the club and pointed out Ramirez the night of his death. 
The stunning realization caused authorities to shift their focus to Esparza herself. Mike Murray told Canning, It certainly made me realize Patricia was involved. Even though she knew Gonzalo Ramirez had been brutally murdered, she was willing to sit down at the age of 19 or 20 with hardened homicide investigators from the Santa Ana Police Department and repeatedly lie to them. Before taking Esparza into custody, investigators waited until she returned to the United States to speak with her. At first, she refused to answer any questions, but when she was charged with murder, she confessed everything she knew. In the end, Esparza admitted that she took Van to the club and pointed him out to her ex-boyfriend but claimed that she didn't know Ramirez would be killed. Canning was told that after they kidnapped Ramirez, Esparza was taken to a bar to wait before she was taken to the repair shop to see a bloodied, but still alive, Ramirez. At that point, I just knew that they were doing all of this simply to punish me, she said. They were mad at him for what he did but they also punished me for his actions. In addition, she continued to deny her own involvement in the case, saying that she had never intended for Ramirez to be injured. She stated, What I can tell you is that I was dragged, pressured, bullied, intimidated into that night when they kidnapped, beat up, and ultimately killed Gonzalo Ramirez. Despite the fact that I did not see him dead, I was terrified by the violence that I observed. Attorneys re-arrested Van and two others who had been at the transmission shop that evening. Esparza was offered a deal to testify against Van and the other defendants, but this would require her to plead guilty to voluntary manslaughter and serve three years in prison. In response, she opted to take her case to the court of public opinion. It is unfortunate that he is willing to destroy a family, that he is willing to take my daughter away from me, knowing that I am innocent, she said during a press conference held by the prosecutor. There were many who came out to support Esparza, but her refusal to accept a plea deal opened the way for another defendant, Diane Tran to accept a plea deal with prosecutors and give her side of the story. Tran stated he would be willing to testify that Asparza had not been forced into anything and was part of the planning for the murder. When you start peeling back the layers, you find that there was an individual who I think was manipulative, who was kind of pulling the strings and claiming to be a victim while using others for her own revenge against the person who raped her. Fulcher said. The new turn in the case was enough for Esparza to agree to plead guilty to voluntary manslaughter in 2016, earning her a sentence of six years behind bars. She agreed to testify against Van, who received a life sentence for the slaying.